morning. What? Say it. Good morning. There we go. So today we're starting the day off cleaning out a grain bin. Fun times. But hey, the building's moving right along. We got offices for roughed in. We got an insulated back wall. Oh yeah, stuff's happening. Waiting on Dad and BJ a minute. We're gonna go over and check the building out. We're gonna check the shop out. Yes. Walk into the office area. So this will be the kitchenette right here. Probably a conference table of some sort, and some chairs and stuff like that to hang out around. And over here we got BJ's office. We are sharing an office. Made that kind of late decision. Take this wall out and. Uh, They'll have one side, I'll have the other. But that's for the porch. You know, for concrete right there. BJ's starting his second career as a construction worker. Ah. Winds right in with the crew. They're gonna start yelling at you here in a minute to get back to work. So we did tell me to go take the trash out or something. We need to we need to swipe those forks. Yeah. Yeah. You think they notice? I don't know. Maybe if we stick our extensions on there. You guys fighting? Workplace violence. Morning. So we are starting the day off walking through some corn. This is some of our first planted corn. Just gonna kind of walk out here and see. I don't think we're gonna see any disease pressure yet. But we're just gonna walk out here and take a look. So this corn is still looking very healthy, but you know, we're here to check a wheat field for Might as well walk out here and check this cornfield. This is our first plant cornfield. First or second, so this is some of the furthest along corn we have. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll see something here. Doubt it. It's dry weather we had early on seemed to me like kind of slowed the corn way down. We have not seen, uh, we're not, not as far along maybe as we would be in normal year, it seems like. So one of the main diseases we fight in our area is a gray leaf spot. So here's what we came over here to actually check. Got some wheat right here. Got a lot of grass mixed out of it right here. Went ahead, that's not good. But went out here, we got nice, good wheat. Uh, I don't think this will be the first field that we do, but this is the first planet, I believe. See how wet this stuff is. It's gonna be soft, I'm sure. But we might be able to run, see it's a little swollen still. Might be able to run this this evening though. I don't know. It's probably gonna be too wet. Yeah, it's real soft. Ah, we're getting anxious. We're getting anxious. I fully expected that we would be done by wheat now. Two weeks ago when it hadn't rained and this stuff was turning by the day, but the cool wet weather has slowed it down a lot. Now it's, as soon as it dries out, it's, it's coming off of those fields, but I think there's a chance of rain today too. Now one thing about wheat that is a little different, wheat is a very time sensitive crop, more so than corn and beans for us. Uh, that stuff will start to sprout in the field and it will also um, start to get vomitoxin real bad if it keeps getting wet. So that's why we try to do wheat as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Um, best case scenario, four days. We got a little over 400 acres, two combines. Problem is, getting rid of the wheat, we may end up storing it in a bin this year. Don't like to do that, like to just cut it and ship it. Everything's pre-contracted ahead of time and it's just best if we can do that. But if we gotta do it, we will. We will put it in a bin and just haul it right back out as time permits. But four days, two combines, several different fields. That's, that's the problem though, lots of moving. You guys are making some good progress on the building, but getting the grain cart hooked up here to the underfirth. I don't think BJ has a whole lot of experience in this and I don't have a whole lot either, but we're gonna try to figure out how to remap our remotes or something. I figured out how to make a profile. Ooh. I've already stored it as underfirth grain cart. Well, hey, you're ahead of me. I don't remember how to do that. Turns out there's a plus button on that menu. Ah. Oh, wow. Noise. I can't wait to hear dad over the radio when he can't figure out how to do that. But can't you move like the red and green down here? Yeah. Something cool about this tractor is the ability, you have to hit edit somewhere, I think. The ability to turn 
turn or change where remotes are. So right now BJ's changing where each remote valve is controlled at. I think you drag whatever color you want up there. Like those are the things no you can put on. Green. Vent and Atco have done a really good job with the remote layout on this tractor. Sometimes companies try to make things simpler and they end up just basically trying to reinvent the wheel and they fail miserably, but I like this a lot. I mean, having the ability to customize everything, walk individual buttons out, it's, I don't know, it's, it's nice. I like it. So the grain cart is hooked up. It has been greased a long time ago, so it is actually ready to go. Hoping to get the combines out today, or at least the gleaner. I want to grease the head. The combine is greased, it is serviced, and it is ready to go, but the head is not. So get that out, make sure everything's running, make sure no coons have burrowed into anything. I don't think we're gonna harvest today. Dad wants to, but I just don't think it's quite time. It's still awful soft out there, the wheat. The wheat crop itself, like the kernels themselves are soft. The ground was soft, you know, not the most ideal, but at this point we'd probably go for it, but the kernels themselves are not dry. Now one problem with storing wheat is it's very hard to store. It's very hard to keep weevils out of it. Uh, quality, I mean, it's just not a fun crop to store. Which is another reason if we can keep from storing it, we will. So one thing me and BJ are gonna do right now is get GPSs moved. We have to put a steer command and antenna and monitor in both combines. Not a hard job, just a job needs done. We ain't looking to steer these things. Like this is 1982. Didn't know to be a farmer. You had to be part acrobat, be able to climb on things. Hmm. Okay. That's weird, so I'm put the cap on this. Lots of coon crap up here. Huh? <laughs> Didn't have ice cream for lunch. So nothing to putting the stuff in here where we already have the harnesses installed. Basically just un unplugging the expensive components, your antenna, your steer command, your monitor. The harnessing, I mean, there's probably a thousand dollars worth of harness in each unit, rough guess, but that stays. We don't move that from tractor to tractor. That's what makes switching stuff so easy. Um, yeah, it's not too bad switching the ag leader stuff. Now, if you had o all OEM, uh, there'd be a less, one less step or two less steps pending. Like if this was all um, a John Deere farm, for example, we would be moving our yellow globe and that would be it because the ag leader monitor that we're moving, which in John Deere speak is like a 4440 or 4640, that's in each tractor that stays there. So, and the steer command is built into the tractor. We like ag leader better and we don't have John Deere equipment. So this is how we do it. Now the cloth is a little bit different than the rest of these machines. It did not come with any kind of guidance. There's no GPS in this machine at all from the factory. The gleaner, uh, the Fent, the Challenger, they all had auto steer, but we like uh, our Ag Leader auto steer systems pretty well, so that's why that's what we're running. We need to pull that head out. But it kind of looks like it's gonna rain, so I don't know. But that thing needs to come out here soon. That's just dirt from the wheat, ain't it? Or beans? Kind of a crappy situation. Oh, oh, over there. That's the, yeah, that's dirt oh, okay. beans, yeah, uh, yeah, okay. definitely. The, the beans that they ate. Yeah, <laughs> secondhand beans. That's how you meant right there on the cutter bar. Yeah. 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 We probably left the steer command in the tractor. Like, we probably need the one out of the deer and the one out of the challenger. So we got a few grease fittings. In each one of these compartments there. There's probably one, just have to look around. But a few grease fittings in each one of these little shields we have to take off. These ones are easy to get to. And that'll pretty much just leave like one or two fittings that we might have to get to with it on the combine. We might be able to get them all, actually. I can't remember how to take this off. I think I need a screwdriver to turn these. I think there's a fitting or two in here. Even got a new grease gun. Love working with family. The problem with working with family is everyone's tools become everyone's tools. And somehow, my grease gun ended up in uh, the bulldozer, or I don't know where it ended up, but we got another one. This one ain't even dirty yet. I'm almost positive there's a grease fitting right in there. That's gonna be one we need when the head's on.
had to come back over to the challenger that I plant beans with. Had to get a BR1 Mini and a steer command out of it. It's all in that jumble of wires. Good times, good times. Makes me really appreciate Dr. Watson, because if I had to do this for a living, I think I would eventually quit. All right, got it. I think on the gleaner, this is much easier to get to. It's really not terrible to get to on this tractor either. I think the cloth is the one that's a real pain in the butt. So I'm gonna make sure I put this one in the gleaner and BJ can have the cloth. Huh? Yeah. What's that? Oh, he was in here. Nothing, proceed. Note to self, know your surroundings before you, before you voice your opinions. Getting it? Oh, dad stopped over. He's got his combine out, checking over a few things. Put these shields back on this head, and then we will readdress the time it is. I don't think we're gonna run today. Dad's really getting itchy. I'd say it's too wet. It's like Dad's setting all the speeds and stuff, switching crop in the monitor. I'm gonna hop in the gleaner and back it out too. Let's see what the good word is. There's Dad's grease gun. It's probably on one of them tires. I'm pretty sure he ran over it. That's why I had to buy a new one. We have a squatter. Baby raccoon. So we have a little bit of grease in the do on the outside of the gleaner here. This thing does have an auto lube system, but there are some places on the system that you still have to grease. Okay, there's a couple pulleys up here that are not touched with the auto lube. You gotta get those. A few other bearings that are pretty critical. So we're gonna hit those with some grease and then this thing will be ready to go. I'm pretty positive we've already greased it, but or grease it again than not grease it. Grease, grease. So we have greased them. We've checked everything we can check for now. So fortunately it looks like it's raining down there and that's where the weed is. Less than ideal. Feels weird to be complaining about rain. Right now we are. All right, that's all we can do for now. Morning, plans have changed. It rained last night. It rained pretty good for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Got about a quarter inch, but that's gonna be enough to make us not harvest wheat today. Good news is we got like four straight days of good weather. So we will be harvesting wheat this week, just not today. So today we're back over at the old grain system because we're glutton for punishment and we're gonna haul some beans out of here. We still have to get all these crops out of this, this place because, well, we're still moving a dryer over here this, this summer sometime. That'll be fun. But anyways, BJ's vacuuming the lake pit out now. I'm gonna finish cleaning the bean bin out. It is, uh, down the sweep has probably two and a half loads in it, so it won't take too long. Sweep's already in the bin. That's the hard part over here. These aren't power sweeps. You have to put these sweeps in the bin every time. Kind of pain in the butt, but that part's already done. So, yeah, probably two loads in there. So if you're new here, we fight water in the worst way over here. Uh, this is our U-Trough auger, it's how we unload bins, also how we transfer grain on this side of the system over to the lake. When it rains, water pours, pours off these bins, soaks right through in here, fills up that hole, the sub pump wasn't plugged in. That was, uh, that was air on our part, but that hole fills up, fills this trough up, water runs all the way across, through there, and then into the leg pit. BJ's getting ready to turn the cross auger on. Okay. Some of the stuff I was unable to get, we're just gonna have to push it across. I'd let it run a little bit longer, BJ. It's pushing it, it's across into the leg pit. Looks like to clean it out there. So here's the stuff that came out of that dump auger. That's why we did not. I'm gonna run that up top. As BJ said, the leg took a massive dump. So this is why we check our leg boots before we start loading because that would have been disastrous up top. That would have plugged leg pipes, wouldn't have been good. Now, if we had our sub pumps plugged up, it wouldn't be as bad, but it happens sometimes. And well, when we seen those were unplugged, we knew we were gonna be getting into something. That's why the new leg is not in the ground and everything's above ground. That's why we dislike sub pumps and holes 
and all, you know, all of the above. Lessons were learned. When the new place was designed, lessons were learned from this place. So here's the first going in. Hopefully this goes right into the truck. That's why we pulled the truck under here. Everything's open. We don't want anything plugging up so there's a little bit of moisture in it. Fingers crossed. We don't want to go up and unplug that bin, but that's what I'm figuring is going to happen. Because nothing's coming to the truck. Wonderful. We're, we're operational again. Had to... Had a bunch of stuff stuck to the side of that holding bin, had fallen down in there while we were not hauling here, and had plugged that pipe. Got flowing free now, though. Yeah, I guess that's one truckload. Still probably loading half in here. The mask is a little needs washed. Yours is a little. You got some frosted tips though. Yeah, it's like the just for men, but gray. Yeah. Yeah. Stop over here at the house site for a second. We just got done cleaning the bin out for the day. In floor heat guys here. LCR radiant heating out of Lynchburg, Ohio. Got the tubes down in the in the garage. This is all ready for concrete. And then here in the basement. So they are putting the pecs into the floor joists. It's like a pretty slick way they go about it. It's got a little piece of uh, aluminum that holds that pipe up to the floor. Kind of reflects the light into the floor. See how it works? I'm pretty excited to heat the house this year.